Okay, we're back with Charlie Dublin. He's the Vice President of Product Management at Acquia. Great to see you, Charlie. Welcome nice to theCUBE. Nice to meet you, Dave. So, Acquia, tell us about the company. Sure. Uh, so, Acquia is the largest um, and best provider of Drupal hosting uh, capabilities. Uh, we rank number two in the digital experience platform space, uh, just behind Adobe. So, very strong business, uh, growing well, and innovating every day. Yeah, Drupal, o open source, you know, super deep, high quality content management system and, and more experience. What you call it a, an experience platform? An experience platform, open, flexible. We want our customers to have choice, the ability to solve their problems how they want, leveraging the power of the open source community. So what were the what were the big challenges? You just describe your you know, kind of the business drivers. We're going to talk about Stormforge, but the things that you were facing, some of the challenges that kind of led you to Stormforge. Sure. Uh, so our objective uh, first is to provide the best experience with Drupal. So that entails uh, lots of capabilities around ease of use for Drupal itself. Uh, but that has to run on the world, a world-class platform. It has to be the most performant. It has to be the most secure. Uh, it needs to be flexible to enable customers to run Drupal however they want to run Drupal. And so that involves the ability to uh, support thousands of different kinds of modules that come out of the community. We want our customers to have choice with Drupal to be able to support those choices on our platform. So optionality is key. You know, sometimes that creates other challenges, like you've got one of everything. So how do you, how do you deal with that, that, mm -hmm. that, that challenge? Yeah, that's a great question. Every strength is a form of weakness. Yeah. Uh, and so um, our objective is really first to provide that choice, uh, but to do it in a cost efficient way. So we try to provide reference architectures for customers, opinionation for our customers to standardize take out some of the complexity might, that they might have if everything were a snowflake. Uh, but, our, but our objective is really to support their needs and err on the side of that flexibility. All right, so you guys had to go through a major replatforming effort around containers and Kubernetes. Can you, can you talk about that and what sure. role Stormforge played? Sure, so tied to the last point, our objective is to provide customers the highest performance and most secure platform. Uh, the entire industry, of course, is moving to Kubernetes and leveraging containers. Uh, we are a large uh, consumer of AWS services and are undergoing a major replatforming away from a legacy AWS towards Kubernetes and containers. And so that major uh, replatforming effort uh, is intending to enable customers to run applications how they want to. And the power of Kubernetes and containers is to support that. And, uh, and so we, we looked at Stormforge as a way to us, for us to right size re re resource capacity to support our customers' applications. I love it, Leg AWS is now legacy. I, Andy Jassy one time said that if they had to do, redo Amazon, they'd do it in Lambda and yeah. you know, using serverless. <laughs> and so yeah, that's yeah. it's been around a long time now. Yeah. Okay, so what were the outcomes th that you were seeking? Was it you know, better management, cost reduction, and, and, and how'd that go? Sure, so our, our customers run a wide range of applications. We support customers leveraging Drupal uh, in every industry. Uh, globally, we do business in 30 different countries, and so what you have is a very wide range of applications and consumer um, and consumption models, and so we felt that uh, leveraging Stormforge would put us in a position where we'd be able to right-size resource to those different kinds of applications, essentially let the platform align to how customers wanted to operate their applications. And, um, and so Stormforge's capability in conjunction with Kubernetes and, and containers really puts us in a position where customers are able to get the performance that they want, uh, get uh, and when they need it on demand. A lot of the auto scaling capabilities that you get from Kubernetes and containers supports that. And so it really enables customers to run their applications how they want to functionally, as well as from a, a performance perspective. So this move toward containers and microservices, sort of modern application development, mm -hmm coincides with a, a, a modern platform like, like Stormforge. Correct. And so there were, I'm sure there are alternatives out there. Why Stormforge? You know, maybe you could explain a little bit more about why, you know, from your perspective, what it does and why you chose them. Sure, so we leverage uh, AWS uh, in many respects in terms of the underlying platform, uh, but we are a very strong DIY for how that platform supports Drupal applications. We view our expertise as being the best at Drupal. And so we felt like uh, for us to truly maximize uh, you know, Kubernetes and containers and the, the power of those uh, underlying technologies, on the one hand, allows us to automate more and, and do more for customers. On the other side of it, it puts a tremendous burden on the level of expertise in order to do that well for every customer every day at scale. And so that at scale part of that was the challenge. And so we leverage 
uh, StormForge to enable us to right-size applications for performance, provide us cost benefits, you know, allocate what you need when you need it uh, for our customers, and that at-scale piece is, is a critical part. We could do elements of it internally. We tried to do elements of that internally, but as you start getting to scale uh, from you know, a few apps to hundreds of apps to certainly across our fleet of tens of thousands of applications, you really need something that leverages machine learning. You really need a technology that's integrated well within uh, AWS, and uh, StormForge provided that solution. So make sure I get this right. So it sounds like you, you sort of from a skill standpoint, transitioned or applied your skills from turning knobs, if you will, mm -hmm. to automation and scale. Correct. And what was that like? Was it? I mean, was the team like leaning into that? You know, loving it? Was it a? Was it a? You know, a challenging thing for you guys to get there. Yeah, it's a good question. So the the benefit and the way that StormForge applies it. So they leverage. Um, machine learning to enable us to make better decisions. So we still have the control elements, but we have much greater insight into what that would mean ahead of time before customers would be affected. So we still have the knobs we need, but we're able to do it at scale. Uh, and then from the automation point, it allows us to focus our deep expertise on making Drupal and the core hosting platform capabilities awesome. Sort of the stuff and resource allocation, resource consumption that's an enabler, uh, we can outsource that to, to StormForge. So this is... a this is not b batch. It's uh, you're basically doing this in sort of near real time. Optimize Live, right? Is the mm -hmm. is the is the capability? Maybe you can describe what sure. It is. Yeah. So Optimize Live is is new. We're in testing with that. Um, we've we've done extensive uh, testing with StormForge on the core, call it decision making logic that allows for the right sizing of consumption and resources for a customer application. So that are, has already been tested. So the core engine's been tested. Optimize Live allows us to do that in real time to make uh, policy decisions across our fleet on what's the right trade-off between performance, cost, other parameters. Um, again, it, it informs our decision-making and our management of our platform that would be very, very difficult uh, otherwise. Without StormForge, we'd have to do massive uh, data aggregation. We'd have to have uh, machine learning and additional infrastructure to manage to derive this information and, and, and. And that is not our core business. We don't want to be doing that. We want insights to manage our platform to enable customers, and StormForge provides that. So, okay, so it's kind of human in the loop thing. Hey, here's what, like our recommendation, or here's some options that you might want to, here's a path that you want to go down, it, but it's not taking that action for you necessarily, right? Correct. You don't want that. Uh, you want to make sure that the, the, the experts are, uh, have a hand in it still. Is that correct? Correct. You still want the experts to have a hand in it, but you don't want them to have a hand in it on each individual app. You need that that machine learning capability, that insight mm -hmm. that allows you to do that at scale. So if you had to step back and think about your relationship with StormForge, what was the business impact of you know, bringing them in? Yeah, first, uh, from a time to market perspective, we're able to get to market with a, a higher performance, more cost-effective solution earlier. So there's that benefit. Uh, second benefit to the earlier point is that we're able to make um, resource allocation decisions focused on where we're, our core competency is, not into the guts of, of Kubernetes containers and the like. A uh, third is that the, um, the machine learning talent that StormForge brings to the table is world class. Uh, I've run uh, machine learning teams, data science teams, and would put them in the top 1% of any team that I've worked with in terms of their expertise. So the, 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 the logic and decision making and insights is outstanding, so we can get to the best decision, the optimal decision much more quickly. And then when you, you accompany that with the newer product and Optimize Live with that automation component you mentioned, you know, all the better. So we're able to uh, make decisions uh, quicker, get it implemented in our platform, and realize the benefits. Uh, what customers get from that is much better performance of their applications, more real time, higher, um, able to scale um, dy more dynamically. What we get is resource efficiency and our network and platform efficiency. We're not over allocating a capacity that costs us more money than we should or under allocating capacity that could um, have a lower performance um, solution for our customers. So that puts money in your pocket and your customers are happier, so there are higher renewal rates, less churn, correct. higher prices over time as you add more capabilities. That's correct. What's it like, well, you know, new application approach, Kubernetes, containers, fine, okay, I need a, a modern platform, but it's a relatively new company, StormForge, mm -hmm. right? What's it like? Working with them, sure. Uh, their their talent level is is world class, and um, you know I wasn't familiar with them uh, when I joined Acquia. 
uh, came to know them and been very impressed. There's many other providers in the market that um, will speak to some similar capabilities and would make many claims. But um, from our assessment, um, our view is that they're the right partner for us. They're the right size. Uh, they're flexible, excellent team. They've evolved their technology roadmap uh, very quickly. Uh, they deliver on their promises and commits. They're a very good team to work with. So I've been very impressed for such an early stage company to deliver and to, and to support our business so, so rapidly. Um, so I think that's a strength. And then I think, again, the quality of the people, that's been manifested in the product itself. It's a high quality product. I think it's unique to the market. So Napoleon Hill, famous writer, thinker, he wrote Think and Grow Rich. If you haven't read it, check it out. But he is, one of his concepts is a lever, a small lever can move a big rock. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be very powerful. Do you, do you see Stormforge as having that kind of effect on your business, that change on your business? I do. Yeah, like I said, I think the, uh, the engagement with them has proven, and this isn't, you know, uh, debatable based on the results that we've had with them. Mm -hmm. we, we ran that team through the ringer to, to validate the technology. Again, we'd heard lots of promises from other companies. Ran that team through the ringer with extensive testing across many customers, large and small, uh, many use cases to really stress test their, you know, their their capabilities, and they came out uh, well ahead of any metric we we put forth, even well ahead of claims that they had coming into the engagement. They exceeded that, uh, and so that's why I'm here. Why I'm an advocate. Uh, why I think they're an outstanding company with a tremendous amount of potential. So. Thinking about, you know, what can you tell us about where you want to take the company and, and the partnership with Stormforge? Sure. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think the, the main um, next step is for us to engage with uh, Stormforge to drive automation, drive decisioning as we expand and move more and more customers over to our new platform. We're going to uncover use cases, different uh, challenges as we go. So I think the, um, you know, it's a learning process for uh, both, both sides, but I think the, um, it's been um, successful so far and, and has a lot of potential. Sounds like you had a great business and, and a great new partnership. So thanks so much for coming on the Cube. Appreciate thank you very it. much. Appreciate your time. All right, my pleasure. And thank you for watching the Cube. You're a global leader in enterprise tech coverage.